This is George from iTech Legion. It's kind of surprising that over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of coolers with very, very specialized applications, you know, small form factor uh, applications. We see a lot of the dual tower enthusiast units, but the one place we haven't seen a lot of activity is in the mainstream cooling segment around the $50 mark uh, in a single tower cooler. And it's really kind of a shame because the single tower mainstream cooler is typically only a couple of degrees off from the large dual tower coolers. Uh, and typically also is only a couple degrees off even from a CLC. So really this is a segment we'd like to see a lot more activity in. And after the release of the R1 Ultimate and the C1, that's exactly the segment that Cryorig is going after now with their brand new H5 single tower CPU cooler. Now, one of the things about Cryorig that we've seen from the start, uh, they make some very, very polished products. There's a lot of know-how going on at this company. Um, they've obviously got, you know, even though they're an upstart company, uh, whoever's behind it really has a lot of know-how in what's going on with cooling. Now, take a look at the H5. Uh, retail price on it is $49.95, so definitely priced right for the mainstream. Take a look at the packaging. Really nice packaging from Cryorig. You get, you know, the exploded look of... Uh, the cooler itself, along with, you know, just a little bit of um, a blurb down the bottom, designed for high efficiency with, you know, the X140 fan. Moving around the side, again, just a couple of the features laid out, extreme efficiency, fine-tuning cooling capacity, zero interference with RAM compatibility. Now, this has become a big deal, obviously, and uh, the H5 has no RAM interference whatsoever if you're using it on an 1150 series chipset or on AMD, AM2, AM3 uh, setup, you're not going to have any of the RAM slots blocked. And five-step easy installation. Cryorig's installation really is second to none. Uh, Noctua definitely comes close. If not, you know, say, you know, you can't say one's better or one's worse, but uh, Cryorig's really got it down. Definitely the best in the industry. A couple of quick specs on it. Stands 160 millimeters tall, so keep an eye on that. 98 uh, millimeters wide, or I should say deep by 143 wide, 853 grams with the fan, and 700 grams without the fan. Uh, six millimeter heat pipes, four of them, and you've got quarter mil or um, I should say 0.4 millimeter fins, 38 of them uh, in the heat sink uh, fin array. And your XT140 fan is a very uh, low profile fan, only 15 millimeters thick. That aids in the RAM compatibility. And that is 700 to 1300 RPM. Tops out at only 24 dB with 65 CFM. We've seen the XT140 before on the C1, and it's a really a well performing fan. You know, one of the nice things about it is the fact that it doesn't sound like a slim fan. Uh, some of you may know slim fans tend to have their own type of noise, uh, which can be a little bit more irritating than the thicker fans. The XT140 does not exhibit that type of noise. It's actually a very, very quiet fan. So now getting a look at the H5 itself, really nicely finished all around as you see. Um, aluminum, as we say, on heat sinks. Cryorig logo with a white cap on the top. The XT140 out front and on the bottom. C1100 copper base. Nicely milled and polished with the four six millimeter heat pipes. Now let's take a look, take the fan off and get a quick look at the fin array because there's a couple of interesting things going on back here. One of Cryorig's big theories is they like to do what is actually fin arrays that force the air to speed up through the fins themselves. So that way you get a little bit uh, better cooling throughout. And what they've actually done is a honeycomb in the front, which will allow for more intake through the front. And it's then compressed out the back as the fins close, fins close up, as you see here, with the standard fins. So what this actually causes is more air getting into the fin array and it speeds up as it's exhausted and it gets compressed through. So it's pushed through at a faster pace and actually accelerates through the fin array. So you do get a little bit better efficiency 
from the, the, that type of design. This is the first we've seen with their um, honeycomb array, as you see here. Really good looking cooler. Like I say, Cryo Rig makes very polished pieces. They're very, very nice looking. Uh, and the accessory kit as well. Just right down to every nut and bolt. Really just meticulous in the way they're put together. Taking a look at the included accessories of the A-Tribe, of course start with installation guide, multilingual, a couple of guides included, and very, very well laid out, easy to follow along. Um, warranty instructions are along the bottom, how to register for your warranty. Sealed registration card is included as well. Moving on from there, AMD backplate and retention bracket, Intel backplate and retention brackets, your standoffs and screws, anti-vibration pads, as well as clips for a second fan, screwdriver for installation. Now you do need to be a little bit careful. Um, you will get more torque using an L screwdriver than you will with a regular screwdriver. So very careful uh, that you don't over tighten things when you're installing. And finally, tube of CP9 Cryo Rigs thermal interface material. Okay, now let's take a look at getting the H-Tribe mounted up. Uh, first step, obviously backplate. If you take a look, um, if you're doing the uh, Intel mount, the clips, or I should say the bolts on the backplate, have three positions, obviously 1366 on the outside, 1150 series in the middle, and all the way inside is going to be 775, and they will click into place. So just put them into correct place for what you're gonna be mounting, and backplate. We'll go into place, and you see the four bolts coming through. Next, take your standoffs, obviously rubber side threaded to the motherboard. And just hand tighten them until they stop. They do have a stop, they do not tighten all the way. Don't worry that it is not completely tight. It is a loose mount, and you'll see in a minute it tightens up when you actually put the cooler in. Like I say, you just want them hand tight, only screw until they stop. Next, your crossbars, go across top and bottom. Make sure you use the center slots if you're doing an 1150 or inside for 1775 and outside for 1366. Small nuts go right on top. And that should get the YouTube comments going that I said that. Once again, they do have a stop. And repeat on the bottom again, making sure you want it theoretically pointing to the inside. So you want the bar closer to the CPU. And with that, the mounting kit is completely in place. Now we've already got the thermal interface material on the CPU. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put the tower into place. Two screws on the bottom will line up with the two screw holes in the mounting kit. Go right in through the top with the included screwdriver. Top started. And you can just go back and forth until you're fully tight. Once again, very important, don't over tighten. There's a distinct stop all the screws have. When you feel any type of pressure to stop, that's it. Don't try and go any further, don't try and force it. There 
and you're done. Plug in your fan. And the H5 is installed. As you see, really good looking cooler in the case. Really nice, especially the white top uh, with the white Fantex Anthu uh, Lux. Really a great look. And does not block the ram slots whatsoever. No impedance at all. Ram slots are completely clear on the 1150 uh, series board. Um, once again, also on 1360, or I should say 2011 board, you're going to have the same situation. No interference in the back either. So absolute full RAM compatibility from the H5. Moving into the performance of the CryoRig H5, uh, taking a look here at the CPU stock clocks, 4770K. We see that the CryoRig H5 is holding its own with some very heady company. Um, the Noctua and Fantex, both more expensive, uh, as is the Macho Zero. Also, the uh, Fantex is a dual fan cooler and runs quite a bit louder than the H5, but the H5 is keeping up with these coolers without a problem, and these are the best coolers in this type of price range and in this class. But now, moving on, and we're going to bump it up to 4.4 gigahertz, 1.21 volts, give it a nice little overclock there in the 4770K, and the cryo rig stays right there with uh, the other coolers, which like I say are a little bit more expensive. Uh, very, very solid performance here, and it stays nice and quiet at 36 dB. Uh, that is a little bit louder than the Noctua, but substantially less than the 12DX, and substantially less noticeable than the 12DX, that's for sure, uh, from outside of the case. Um, the 12, the Noctua NHU-12S, I should say, uh, definitely different tonality, not nearly as noticeable as the CryoRig H5, even though uh, the dB difference is very, very minimal. The H5 definitely has a different tonality, which makes it a little bit more noticeable outside the case. But all in all, performance excellent uh, throughout and definitely keeps up with, like I say, the best of the best in its class. To date, everything we've seen from CryoRig has been uh, really incredibly impressive, and the H5 is certainly no exception. The H5 uh, has a very pointed audience, obviously. $50 price tag, and you're looking at full RAM compatibility, you know, using a slim fan. And the H5 does a really nice job. At uh, the $50 mark, it keeps up with the best coolers at that price point uh, as far as performance. And even, you know, keeps up with the Noctua NHU-12S as far as performance, which runs a little bit more money. Now, as far as the cooler itself, I mean, like I say, the, design, the engineering and execution are absolutely flawless. It's a great looking cooler, very well engineered, very, very well put together. You know, you can't find a flaw on the unit. And CryoRig, like I say, also uses what's probably the best mounting kit out there. Um, nothing is going to be easier than putting in a CryoRig cooler, and the H5 is included in that. And really, everything just goes very, very smoothly from start to finish. Now, as far as the performance, like I say, it does pretty much keep up with, you know, the Fantex uh, 12DX and the Noctua NHU-12S, but really doesn't do anything as far as, you know, blowing them away or anything. Um, doesn't outperform them. You know, it's right there in the mix. The one thing I will say, though, however, it is a little quieter than the 12DX. It's a little bit louder than the Noctua NHU-12S, but um, the tonality of the slim fan is a little bit more intrusive than uh, we get from the thicker fans. Uh, so even at a lower uh, decibel rating, but like I say, a little bit more intrusive. So it's a really, really solid choice. And, you know, especially at low RPM, it's just about dead silent. And if you're using a case that's, you know, not uh, open ventilation, it's going to be just about dead silent. Overall, I'm going to give the CryoRig H5 a High Tech Legion Gold Award. Incredibly solid performance flawless installation, and, you know, beautifully executed piece. So, High Tech Legion Gold Award for the CryoRig H5.